remember that yesterday I told you that we were going to read another Jack and the Beanstalk story. And this one is a sequel, meaning it's what happened next in the story. Now, it's written by a different author and has a different illustrator, so it's not going to look exactly the same, but it still has some of the same characters. So I hope you enjoy it. It's called Look Out, Jack! The Giant is Back. And it's by Tom Birdseye and illustrated by Will Hillenbrand. And remember that in the last one that we read, they knocked down the beanstalk and he fell, but they didn't really say what happened to him. So he just kind of, um, he wasn't chasing after him anymore, but hmm, not sure exactly what happened to him. So look at that really gross foot. Ugh. All right, here we go. Last you heard of Jack, he had outsmarted the fee fi fo fum giant and made off with it. The bag of coins, the hen that laid golden eggs, and the magic harp that could sing so pretty. That old giant lay dead at the bottom of the beanstalk. So you thought that was a happily ever after of that, right? So now notice in what I just read to you in the other story we read, um, he did run off with the hen that laid golden eggs, but he didn't get a harp, and he didn't get a bag of coins. But as I said before, this story has been told so many times, and so there's different different versions of it that have things slightly different. So in some of them, he gets even more than just the hand. And here he is. And you can see he looks a little bit different than the character in the other book, but it's still Jack. And here's the things that he ran off with. A lot more to carry and than uh, just a hen, huh? Wrong. Not more than ten minutes later, the dead giant's big brother showed up. He was something fearful, twice the size of the little one, ten times as nasty, and as ugly as a slug pie. He started tying a rope ladder together so he could climb down and get Jack for what he'd done. Lickety split, Jack and his mama packed up the coins and the hen and the harp, then hopped on a boat to America, where Jack bought a nice little farm in the mountains of North Carolina. That old giant will never find us here, Jack said, and settled down to raising the prettiest prize-winning roses you've ever seen. Life was good and peaceful and oh so fragrant. So here we go. Here he is going off in a boat. Now the other story did not say this, right? It kind of made him look like they lived happily ever after on their own farm. But this story is kind of changing it up a little bit. Until one day in August, when it was so hot, Jack had to pack the hen in ice to keep her from laying hard-boiled eggs instead of golden ones. He just finished the job and was having some lemonade on the front porch when there boomed a deep, angry thundercloud of a voice. There's that word thunder cloud. Wham, bam, hickety hack, I'm going to get that boy named Jack. He now be living, but soon he'll roast. I'll spread him with mustard and eat him on toast. So he is his own little little saying, right? Not the fee fi fo fum, but he still wants to eat him, huh? Uh-oh, said Jack. Uh-oh was right. Standing there atop a mountain, glaring down at him with mean green eyes, was you know who. There's the brother. He found it. Give me the money, Jack, the giant demanded, and the hen and the harp, too. Bring them to me now, or I'm coming down to get them, and it won't be pretty. Jack looked around. No chance of running for it. He was caught red-handed, which would have made folks as nervous as a duck in the desert. Not Jack, though. He waved real friendly-like and hollered. Be right there, Mr. Giant! Oh, he's got a plan. What do you think his plan is? Hmm. What do you think his plan is? Here, here are the roses. Look at the big feet up here at the top, and the dog looks like the dog is barking at him. I bet Stella Luna would be doing that, too, to protect us from this giant. Then, quick, right quick, he and his mama put together a little picnic for the occasion. 373 platters of southern fried chicken. Did you hear that? 373 platters of chicken. 
600 pounds of mashed potatoes with gravy, huge heaps of boiled okra, fried green tomatoes, and coleslaw, 1,000 biscuits with sweet cream butter and strawberry jam, 99 gallons of tart apple cider, a red chicken tablecloth to spread everything on, and a dozen of his finest, most fragrant long stem roses for a centerpiece. <coughs> Look at all of that food! It takes a lot to feed a, a angry, hungry giant, I guess. Boy, they have some kind of plan, though. <coughs> All of this, plus the coins, the hen and the harp, Jack packed onto his two mules. Thistle and thorn. Then up the path he went, whistling like he didn't have a trouble in the world. Because, you see, Jack, being as smart as a tree full of owls, had a plan. Remember, we talked about in another story how owls are sometimes considered to be really smart and wise. So they're saying Jack is as smart as a tree full of owls. That's a lot of owls. So he's got all of his stuff packed up to take up there. As soon as Jack got to the top of the mountain, the giant started in again. Wham, blam, hickety hack. I'm going to get that boy named Jack. He now be living, but soon he'll roast. I'll spread him with mustard and eat him on toast. There he is. He's up there mad. I wonder if his plan's going to work. Wow, this is interesting. The page, I have to go back like this. The page, it's flipped just so you could just see how big that giant is. They flipped the picture to, to spread over across two pages. That's pretty cool. I got to read it like this. Then the giant stood back with an evil gap, gap, gap tooth grin, waiting for Jack to fall all over himself, trembling in fear. But Jack smiled and said, Nice to meet you too, Mr. G. Maybe you didn't hear me right, the giant grumbled. He shouted so loud, windows rattled clear up to New York City. Wham, blam, hickety hack, I'm going to get that boy named Jack. He now be living, but soon he'll roast. I'll spread him with mustard and eat him on toast. He's not giving up yet, has he? <clears throat> but look, look what he's doing now. You can see there's some... Those two tiny little brown things in there, believe it or not, are big pieces of chicken. Look how tiny they look in his mouth, though. As calmly as you please, Jack said, I figured you to be hungry. He pulled out a platter of fat southern fried chicken and waved it in the mountain breeze so the giant could get a good whiff. Think of it as an appetizer, he said, to have before you eat me on toast. An appetizer is something that you have when you're hungry, but it's not time yet to eat the whole meal. It's just a little something you eat, a little snack first. Insulted that Jack wasn't responding to his show of ferocity, the giant snatched the chicken out of Jack's hand and shoved it platter and all down his throat in one bite. So insulted means when you are upset, your, your feelings are hurt, that somebody has said something to you that you just can't believe they said. Jack said, by all means, help yourself. He was busy spreading the rest of the picnic goodies out on the red checkered tablecloth. But tell me, where do you think I should put the roses? So here he is. He's got all the stuff and he's got some roses it's interesting i wonder what the deal is with the roses what do you think <clears throat> oh he is really gross in how he's eating this look at that looks gross roses the giant couldn't stand it just what did he have to do to get some respect he snapped down another platter of fried chicken then another and another he'd show jack a thing or two until all 373 were gone and the 600 pounds of mashed potatoes with gravy and the huge heaps of boiled okra, fried green tomatoes, and coleslaw, and the 1,000 biscuits with sweet cream butter and strawberry jam, and even the red checkered tablecloth. Then he washed it all down with those 99 gallons of tart apple cider. Do you think he's still hungry after all that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much it takes to feed a giant. All right, here we go. <clears throat> so
So there, the giant bellowed after the last gulp. He began again. Wham, blam, hickety hack. But quickly his volume faded. I'm going to get that boy named. His stomach was starting to feel a right mite uncomfortable from all the food he'd crammed in. It was too much, even for a giant. Ah, uh, you get the point, Jack, the giant moaned. But before I eat you, where's the money? Oh, yeah, Jack said. Sorry, I almost forgot. He hauled out the bag of coins. Here they be, Mr. G. The giant's belly began to rumble and gurgle in a disturbing way. His next words came out with hiccups in between. And the hiccup hen that lays golden eggs. Did you bring the hiccup hen, Jack? See, he's got the bags of gold. Oh, yucky. <laughs> Look at that. Look at his his belly. Yuck. Why, sure, said Jack. He held up the hen and gave it a little peck of a kiss. The giant belt so big. Burp. Folks in the valley thought a thunderstorm was brewing. And the magic harp, he said with a grimace. Grimace means you're like going like this. I want to hear the harp sing. Good idea, said Jack, reaching for the harp. Nothing like the right song to, to calm an upset stomach. What song do you wish, Master Jack? The harp asked. Look at that harp. It's actually got a little face on it. Oh boy, he looks like he's falling down. The giant was clutching his belly and it turned a terrible shade of green. Jack whispered in the harp's ear. The harp began to sing. Fee-fi-fiddly-dee, you'll not get the gold, the hen or me. Jack is too nimble, he's just too quick. Watch him run, hickety-split. With that, Jack took off like a shot. The giant jumped to his feet, screaming, Come back here, you, but quickly doubled over in pain. It looked like Jack was going to make a clean getaway, just like he cleverly planned. So they're running away. Do you think he's going to get caught? Oh, here we go. Here we go. We got, oh man, look at that stinky little foot there, green foot. Until the giant, who was not quite as stupid as Jack had thought, pulled a trick of his own. He kicked off his boots and waved his smelly old toes in the air. Imagine the stinkiest feet ever. Then imagine 10,000 more. One whiff and a flock of geese fainted in midair. Trees killed over like a wilted lettuce. Why, even the clouds in the sky took off for Canada. The smell was so bad. Jack couldn't handle it either. He became dizzy. His knees buckled under him and he fell to the ground. So he had his own trick. He has his own trick, the stinky feet. Wow, it looks like even the skunk who can make stinky smells of his own is like running away. And notice how they did the words. They made the words look like they're falling. Very cool. I like when the illustrators do things like that. Oh, look at this foot. Look at that foot. Now it looks like all kinds of colors. See what happens. And so this story might have tragically ended with Jack spread with mustard and eaten on toast and the coins in the hand and the magic heart back in giant land. If Jack hadn't been such a quick thinker, gasping for breath, he crawled to his roses and breathed deeply. So fragrant were they that he instantly revived and escaped down the mountain with all the loot. Phew! Uh, revive means that you came back to came back to life or that you woke up. So here he is. He's trying to go for the roses, crawling after the roses. The giant became madder than a rained-on rooster. In a tantrum, he stomped his feet so hard the vibrations went all the way to California, where some folks say they are shaking things up still, like an earthquake, right? He stomped again and again, harder and harder, until the jolts were so powerful that the top of the mountain fell in, swallowing him and his stinky tootsies, too. Tootsies are a funny name for your toes. There he stays to this very day. There he is. And Jack, 
Why, he's back on his farm with his mama gathering golden eggs, listening to that harp, magic harp, and growing the prettiest, most fragrant roses you can imagine. He'll get married soon, I reckon, and live happily ever after, because this time that really is the end of the story. Wham, blam, hickety hack, no more giants to bother Jack. He now be living a life of ease, sitting on the front porch, pretty as you please. There he is. You can see on the very last page, there he is, looking like he's sitting there with a girl on the porch. Okay, hope you enjoyed the sequel to uh, Jack and the Beanstalk. Remember, sequel is, is like another story about the same characters, like what happened next. All right, I'll talk to you soon.